Hi everyone, Stepan here. <clears throat> I'm going to show you round two from Liberets Open in the Czech Republic. Uh, so after having won in round one against a 1500 opponent, I got paired against the 1700. My opponent was young, uh, 16, 17, 18, I, I'm not sure, I apologize. And I decided to play the London system. Uh, I didn't want to experiment uh, and I didn't know what he was going to play. But the good thing about London is that you're prepared for, for most of the stuff they could play. And this game is important because of a move order mistake my opponent made. As you're going to see a bit later on in the series, uh, two moves, two, two games later actually, I, I reached the same position and my other opponent made the same mistake. So this is very common. If it happened to me two games in a row with white, then you should know about it. So I started with pawn to d4, d5, bishop f4, knight f6, e3. Now there are several ways to play. If black plays pawn to e6, we get into the main lines. If black plays c5, and after c3 chooses to deviate from e6 or knight c6, then we enter this line. And this line starts after queen to b6. Now, I should mention that a very, very interesting attempt for white, instead of the main line queen to b3, is to play queen c2. And this is very tricky. Uh, black really has to know what he's doing, but this is a story for, for another video. This is something I've been working on recently, but wasn't prepared enough for, for, for this tournament. So I played queen to b3, and now my opponent played c4, which is thematic. This is the main move, and queen to c2. And here we reach the, the move order mistake I, I want to talk about. So what black wants to do is black wants to play bishop to f5, once the knight is developed, uh, that way he can get his bishop outside of the pawn chain before playing e6, and he can gain a crucial tempo on the queen, claiming the, the h7, b1 diagonal. If black plays bishop to f5 now, this loses the game on the spot because of checkmate. So takes, and if black wants to take the rook, then, then this is checkmate. Therefore, uh, black has to develop the knight first before playing bishop to f5. Unfortunately, black cannot develop the knight first because that's the move order mistake uh, my opponent made in the game and that, that's what I would like to talk about here. After black plays knight to c6, bishop f5 is now a threat. So white has to do something about it. If white makes a mistake and plays knight f3, then bishop f5 actually works. And this position should be slightly better uh, for, for black because white has to play queen c1. If queen takes f5 is played, then queen takes b2 and black wins. Uh, you, you've just lost an exchange. Therefore, instead of the mistake knight f3, white plays knight to d2. Now bishop f5 doesn't work. So bishop f5, queen takes and my, my rook is not hanging. So, coming back to this position. If black wants to play bishop f5, he needs to start with g6. That way, the position I'm going to talk about in a second is unavoidable. So the theoretical move here is pawn to g6. And after knight to d2, black plays bishop to f5. White is forced to play queen c1 to, to keep defending b2. Okay, and this is the position. This is a theoretical position. Now, as in the game, if my opponent starts with knight to c6, then white has a very, very pleasant position with a strong advantage. White plays knight to d2 here, and bishop f5 doesn't work. Why? Because the rook is defended, so black has to try pawn to g6, preparing bishop to f5. Unfortunately, this doesn't work either, because of a very thematic move, which you have to know about, and that's pawn to e4. And when I played this in the game, my opponent had a very long thing. Now, the theory is actually to, to take on e4. Uh, this position is very tricky if you don't know it. So knight takes e4 is the best move. And after knight takes e4 to take d4, giving up the c4 pawn, the material is equal. Uh, after bishop to g7, white could take on, on e4, but I wouldn't recommend it. Uh, the, the best move, in, in my opinion, is bishop to e3, which again is the position I played two games later, so I don't want to get into that. I should mention that bishop f5 doesn't work here, uh, trying to win a piece uh, a bit later on because of f3, and unfortunately you're going to lose the c4 pawn. So, after e4 the position is tricky, but black is still okay if, if takes on e4. My opponent played pawn to e6, and now this position is both 
positionally and strategically very, very close to winning for white. White has an incredible amount of space. B5, B4 is uh, not coming in about 10 moves. Uh, black has dark squared weaknesses all uh, over his king side. All of these squares are weak. There is no easy way to defend them. And most importantly, uh, white gets to play e5. Now, after e5, if I'm black, I would seriously consider resigning because there is no good move. Knight g8 is obviously bad. Uh, knight h5 simply fails to bishop to e3. And if you try to reroute the knight, knight to f5, then bishop takes c4. And uh, white is going to win a piece back with pawn to d5. So takes d5, let's say queen b5, dc6. Let's say queen c6 and now simply knight to f3. Uh, white is dominating the entire position. Black is undefended. Uh, c4 is weak. Uh, black's counterplay is nowhere to be seen. So if knight h5 doesn't work, then knight d7 has to be played. But now, uh, if black wants to castle queenside, then there is no b5, b4. And white gets a free hand on the king side and in the center. And if black wants to castle king side, then most likely he's going to get checkmated. So I just continued developing knight f3, he played bishop g7, bishop to e2, he castled. And here I played h4 instantly, instantly, thinking that f6 was my opponent's only move. When I analyzed the game afterwards, uh, I saw an alternative to h4, which I didn't look for during the game. h4 is just a move you would play without thinking. And the engine actually doesn't like h4. It says white loses all of his advantage. Uh, the, the way to play here is to castle and after queen d8 preparing b5 to play b3. Uh, C, b, a, b. f6, e, f6, queen, f6. And white should be much better here. This is basically a good French defense structure in which e6 is weak, the bishop on c8 is bad. And despite having achieved f6, black should be much worse. But practically speaking, h4 it still, in my opinion, is the best move because it puts tremendous pressure on black's position. h5, of course, is impossible because of knight g5 and eventually uh, g4 is coming. So let me just show you that. If here, then, then g4 comes and typical London system attack. Uh, so after h4, the only move is pawn to f6, which my opponent didn't play. Uh, now, you could take, you could not take. The engine actually prefers not taking, which I have a hard time understanding. Uh, I think in the game I would have taken. Uh, now, this should be equal, and th that's the reason why h4 is bad. After knight f6, knight e5, knight g4, the engine gives this as equal. Still, practically speaking, I mean, who would want to be black here? I, I just don't understand that. Of course, there's some pressure on f2, but yeah, yeah. Okay, let me let me turn on the engine. Uh, the position is plus 0.7. If bishop takes g4, then rook takes and black should be much better. And if knight g4, then rook takes and g3 and white has a slight edge. If black gives up the exchange. Okay, but after f6, the best move is bishop to e3. And now again, you're counting on uh, the pressure on the queen. So if fe5, knight e5, Knight e5, d5, the queen drops back to d8, and white plays f4 with a with an advantage. Knight f3, knight d4 is coming, castles queenside, and then g4, h5. So f6 was definitely the critical move. This is a typical French structure in which f6 is the pawn break you, you just have to play. Instead, my opponent played queen d8, and now, uh, even according to the engine, black is simply lost. Uh, I continued h5. Queen d8 is not without reason. He wants to start counterplay, but it's too slow. Hg, hg, and here I, I, I made a mistake, which again I played almost instantly. I thought there was a, a winning move after the game in, in this position, and I thought Castle's queenside just wins because I get to double my rooks. But when I analyzed the game, I found a much better idea. And the engine actually confirms it. Uh, the best move here to play for a crushing winning advantage is knight to g5. 
let's assume black continues his counterplay. Knight h7, rook e8, and now simply knight to f3. This is absolutely devastating. You want to play bishop g5 and then knight f6 and then mate with queen to d2 and queen to h6. So uh, this is the line I'd analyzed. a5, bishop g5, queen c7, queen d2, preparing queen h6. Now bc3, bc3, let's say rook b8, knight f6 check, knight f6, bishop f6. Eventually, this is going to lead to to checkmate this is like plus a million uh, the alternative which i thought was winning after the game was castle's queen side and for example b4 rook h3 bc3 bc3 let's say queen a5 rook h1 uh, rook e8 for example and now bishop h6 the problem is bishop to h8 and again i i'm gonna have to invest some time into bishop g5 and Maybe, maybe the winning attempt is bishop c4. The engine gives this as plus three if you play bishop c4. But what the engine says here doesn't really matter. For a human, it's really hard to continue this at attack, I think, if, if you're going to be giving up pieces. So, for example, queen a6 here and knight to d6. Even though black is forced to give up the exchange, how are your pieces coming in? Uh, I mean, white should be better, of course. White should be better in any position, but okay. In the game, I played what I thought was the most natural move, missing a completely obvious response by my opponent. Uh, he just took on h6. And after rook h6, he played king g7. And, and I, I missed king g7. I don't know how to explain that, but I didn't see that his queen and rook are just going to be challenging the h file. And of course, now it's no longer simple. So here I started thinking for a long time, and I came up with a, with a winning setup. So this is just strategy, no calculation. I want to be able to play knight g5, f3, uh, g3, f4, bishop f3, castles, queen side, rook h1. In which case my pieces are going to be coming in. So I just did that slowly. I need to be able to get my bishop to f3 to challenge the h1 square without hanging anything. And at the same time, I need to be able to defend against the queenside counterattack. So I played rook h1. He played a5, I castled queenside. Uh, if I don't castle queenside, then there is no attack. I just need to be able to withstand the pressure on the queenside. Rook h8, I took. If he takes with the king, then I get rook h1 for free. And that's very simple. So he takes with the queen. And now again, if I can play rook h1, the game is over. If I don't play rook h1, the game goes on. So my plan in action. Uh, I should mention that the engine thinks this position is still equal uh, because of this king g7 idea which he found. But when it sees my plan, it agrees that there is no way to stop it. So I'm happy that I invested a lot of time and came up with this. So g3, the engine doesn't recommend g3. It, it thinks it's a bad move. But I just couldn't figure out a different way to, to get my rook to h1. Bishop b7, knight g5. Uh, I cannot play uh, bishop f3 now because of queen h6. And that's kind of unfortunate. Uh, I lose a knight. So knight b6, f4 first. Then bishop to f3. b4, bishop f3. Now the rook is coming to h1. And then the queen is coming to h2. And the game is over. At this point, I, I just knew that I was going to win. Uh, the attack is basically unstoppable now. bc3, bc3. Queen f8, uh, one prophylactic move, which is actually an attacking move. Knight b1 prevents queen a3, but also allows queen h2. So knight b1 isn't a waste of time in the attack. It's a move I would have played anyway, even if he hadn't played queen f8. Okay, so knight d8 doesn't really do much. Uh, rook h1, queen to g8, and now queen to h2. And the position is hopeless. Uh, the engine says like plus 20. Uh, actually, it announces forced mate at some point. So <clears throat> the only way, way to prevent checkmate is king to f8, which he played. But this fails to knight h7. Uh, of course, king e8 loses to knight f6. So he has to play king to uh, d7. Uh, king to e7, excuse me. And now I didn't see uh, the best continuation. I played what I just thought was winning. And it was, but the alternative was more winning. A knight of six is actually a winning move, uh, the simplest winning move. Queen to g7, and now queen to b2, believe it or not. And if he tries to save his uh, knight with knight to d7, then queen a3 check. 
leads to checkmate. This is very pretty. So the engine says mate in one basically after after knight c5. Yeah, so so knight f6 was the winning move. I played uh, what I'd calculated beforehand instantly. I just played queen h4. Of course, if the king moves away, then knight f6 wins the queen. So he only has one move. That's pawn to g5. I took it. He blockaded with queen g6, but I'd actually anticipated this and bishop h5. If uh, the knight is taken, then g6 wins the queen. So queen e4 is the only move. And now I really didn't want to complicate things. I just went into a winning endgame and the conversion wasn't hard. Queen e4, d4, knight f6. Uh, knight d7 was played. Bishop to e2, attacking the c4 pawn. Bishop d5 defending and rook h8. Basically, all of his pieces are, are tied down. If the knight on f6 is ever taken, then gf6 and bishop h5 and the f7 pawn is going to fall. Also, I'm going to queen my g pawn. Also, I can play knight a3, win the c4 pawn. Basically, the, the possibilities are plentiful and there are many ways to win this position. It's just over. It's hopeless for, for black. He played knight f8. Uh, probably wants to get into g6, but that's pretty relevant because I have mm -hmm. uh, rook to e8 checkmate. Uh, yeah, I don't know what to suggest. Uh, yeah, I'm actually threatening checkmate. Excuse me, he had to react to that. Uh, so knight to f8 prevents mate. Uh, knight a3 attacking the pawn on c4. Rook c8, knight b5 getting into d6. He defends, but now I just get my king closer to the center. Knight d7, now of course it's no longer mate on e8. I just took, took with the king. Knight takes e4, winning a pawn. Uh, knight b6, knight d6. This was traded off. Uh, he defended the pawn on f7. I attacked it again, and here he resigned. Uh, obviously, I'm just going to take the pawn on f7 and then play g6, g7, g8 equals queen. That's an unstoppable threat. Uh, it, the, the game is just over. So even though I played inaccurately in the attack, the position was much simpler for whites to play and ended up converting without too much hassle. Uh, the only problematic uh, part of the game was finding g3, f4, knight g5, bishop f3, rook h1. Once you, you see that idea, then, then it's simple. Okay, thank you for watching. I hope you like the game. Uh, I have to say I'm enjoying the London more and more. Uh, yeah, stay tuned for more chess. See you tomorrow for round three.